Hey guys, today we're going to discuss the project clock settings in Sonar X2. When we have different audio devices working with each other, they all depend on a clock, which can have slight variations going from one device to another. We'll need to make sure these devices are synchronized, and to do that, we use the project clock settings panel. Press the P key to bring up the preferences menu. Go down to the project section and select clock. In the clock tab, we have source, ticks per quarter note, and timecode format. First, let's take a look at source. The source section allows you to choose what sonar will use as a timing source, and it has four options available. Internal, MIDI sync, SMPTE slash MTC, and audio. The first option, internal, uses the clock on your computer's motherboard. The second option, MIDI sync, will let you sync sonar to an external MIDI device, such as a keyboard. Next, we have SMPTE slash MTC, which lets you sync to an external device that generates SMPTE timecode, or MIDI timecode. Lastly, we have audio. Audio will allow you to sync sonar to your sound card's clock. If you select either internal or audio as the source clock, then sonar will be the master, while any other devices will be its slave. The internal clock is a good choice if your project is comprised of just MIDI notes, while audio must be chosen if your project contains any audio files. I only say that so you'll understand, because sonar will take care of all that for you. If you bring some audio into your project, this will be automatically set to audio. With MIDI sync, sonar can be the master or the slave, however the clock will be from an external device. If Sonar is the slave, no audio playback will be supported in Sonar. SMPTE slash MTC will allow Sonar to be the master or slave, but the clock will be generated by a supplied timecode. Ticks per quarter note lets you specify how many subdivisions per quarter note there are. For example, if I set ticks per quarter note to 48, hit apply, and close down the preferences menu, take a look up here. At the beginning of the project, we are at the first bar and the first beat, or quarter note. Then we have these three zeros. That is the current subdivision of the beat. If you look over here on the ruler, you can see the second beat, or second quarter note, begins here. 1.02.000. Between the first beat and the second beat, the timeline is divided up by 48 individual ticks. Here we are 12 ticks in. Here, 24, 36, and on the 48th tick, we start beat 2. Four smaller sections of 12 ticks make up one quarter note of 48 ticks. If I open up the Preferences menu and change ticks per quarter note to 120 and hit Apply, now the quarter note is made up of 120 ticks, four smaller sections of 30 ticks each. 960 is the default, and it's going to offer the most precise timing placement available in Sonar. Timecode format will let you determine the SMPTE frame rate that Sonar will sync to, and SMPTE slash MTC offset will let you determine an amount of the timecode that will pass before Sonar begins to play. For example, if you sync to an external tape device and the audio doesn't start at zero, you can set the offset so that sonar will begin playing when it reaches the correct position. This value is in hours, minutes, seconds, and frames, with the number of frames per second decided here. So, that covers the basics of the Project Clock tab. Later on, we'll look at actually syncing some devices together with sonar as the master, and then with sonar as the slave. But for now, you should have an understanding of the clock. Thanks for watching. Please rate and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.